Hey guys, so I am back with part two of my Ask Tiffany late vi video recently, my recent Ask Tiffany video, and I get it, like I am i don't expect to answer like 500 questions or anything like that, and I know that's kind of part of the fun is like, well, you know, will your question be answered or whatever, but something about this last one, I got through about half of the questions in that video, the video was freaking 40 minutes long, and I was feeling myself just like, just kind of like talking like this and just kind of like trying to get through it. I was hot. It's very hot. So I just thought, you know, I'm just going to take a break. I'll come back to it. But I guess it was because I was really going through, you know, trying to hit it. And I could have stopped it there, but I felt like, dang, I didn't even answer any from the last half. So next time I'll mix it up more and I'll kind of go through and try to randomize it a bit more. Um, but I thought, you know, I, I just feel a little bad that that happened like that. And we've, we've gotten a lot more. We've got, we've gotten a lot more questions, you guys know. But yeah, a lot more questions. Um, okay, so the trick is to find where I left off. I uh, love, A. Rich says, I love your vlogs. Question, toilet paper over or under? I'm an over toilet paper. -er. Although, there was this picture that I saw on Facebook one time, which, this is why I stay away from Facebook, like from my personal Facebook. If I do post something there, it's usually just a photo that I like, kind of just shared over from Instagram. I don't want to go on there and be bombarded with, I feel like every time I get off Facebook, I'm like, ugh, I just feel, everybody's sharing the worst and the best, but it's like, ugh. Um, I don't want to see pictures of like a spider popping out of a toilet or, you know, a dog that's like sick. It's, it's just, I can't take it. Um, but yeah, one time I was on there and I was, I think maybe I unfriended this person. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but, but, but yeah, this person that was on my friends list posted a picture of a toilet paper roll. I don't remember who did it. It just stuck in my mind. And it said, this is why you fold it under, like where it's hanging from the back. Because there was a spider on the other side of the front, um, which I guess they could be hiding on the, the back of the back too, but oh my god, people, um, I don't know, I just like the way it looks from the front better. I think it's easier to tear. If I, if I ever do the toilet paper from the back and I'm tearing it, we always, we have those toilet paper like stands, like they're not mounted on the wall. I always like rip them over. Maybe I'm just like intense, I don't know. Um, really deep things we're covering here. Okay, so Julie Beans, that's a cute name. She says, why do you think you get a lot of positive feedback and other YouTubers have such negative and nasty comments? Um, I like watching videos that don't have negative, nasty comments. If I see a lot of that, I'm just not into it. I don't like to, to read negativity. I don't like that. And this is my channel. It's my, yeah, I can, my family sees this. It's kid friendly. I don't want, I don't want that. And you don't have to have that. So I think the message is, if you're on YouTube, you don't have to deal with that. I see people addressing it a lot, um, and I know like even now I'm addressing it in a way that I want to. I'm not addressing it like trying to defend myself. Like I see a lot of people trying to do or trying to like plead, like please stop. And it's like I get that too, but it's just feeding it. It's letting people know that you care. And for me, I over the years I haven't gotten a lot because because of a few reasons. I don't let it get to me if there are people that want to talk about it elsewhere, if there's whatever, that's fine. Um, I, I really I really don't care. What has it affected me over the years? Everything's gotten 10 times better, so, I mean, it does nothing. Um, if anything, it brings more attention to someone. So, like I said in the last video when we were talking about like trolls and stuff, it doesn't, I don't address, I don't let it get to me. Um, if I see something and I know it's like, a, you, know, you can tell right off the bat, I don't read it. I just hit, don't show this anymore. Um, if you're on Instagram, you can block the person if it's out of control. I don't care if people say, Tiffany, I don't like this, or you've changed, or I don't like what you're doing here, or you don't look good today, or whatever. That I don't care. But if people are really getting nasty and saying personal things about family, or my family, or um, my character, or anything like that, it's like, who, like, get out of here. Like, like it's just like, you just block it and move on. Um, but this is, and, and you just don't think about it. If you start... But sometimes it's fun. I think sometimes it's funny to like say something back like, oh, like, but I don't recommend that. I have been guilty of that over the years. I don't think it's anything to feel guilty about. I think it's funny. I don't care. Literally one in 500 comments, I don't approve. And it's not because you can look. People say like, I don't like this, or this isn't my favorite, or that, or that, or I wish you would have done that different, or look, your eyelash is falling off. Maybe use more glue next time. That's different. If someone's being nasty, no one wants to see that unless if you're a troll yourself. So I did change my battery. It looks a little different. Um, 
But no, I positivity feeds neck po the positivity feeds positivity, negative breeds negativity, and it's like if you it's just a freaking free for all, and one person like that one comment out of five hundred that I it's like it will cause a conversation. People will start, you know. I don't even like people defending me. Like, it's just too much. I think that it's just, I don't like pe to see people engaging. Um, it's just too much. And then, then more negativity comes and people, oh yeah, let me, let me. And then they realize this is troll. This is a good place for trolls. And then they you know, start like hanging out. Um, so like, I'm not sifting through deleting negative things all day. No, and even if I was, that is, that's not, I mean, that's, that's my prerogative, but but that's not what happens. So I think that's really, really a kind of a cool thing. What is your favorite movie? Astra Divenstein asks me. Not so good at pronouncing names all the time. What is your favorite movie? I have so many, and I think I've kind of mentioned them over the years. I really like, um, I really like older movies. I like, I really am very eclectic, like with my taste in music and in movies. I like everything, um, but it's really funny. Let me, let me think about that. I need, I need to do anything about that because I'm, I'm thinking of all these different ones and I feel like something's going to pop into my head that I, that I don't. I like a lot of 80s movies. Um, I really love like Pretty in Pink. It's probably my very favorite one. Um, I really love like just typical things when I was little. I liked Grease and Dirty Dancing. I really love The Holiday. Something about that movie makes me feel so good and cozy. I just love it. It just, it just makes me feel good. Um, I love watching older movies. I... I've seen every single Doris Day movie. She was like my favorite. When I was younger, I would go to my grandma's house and we like, like when blockbusters still existed, I rented like every single Doris Day movie that they had. And um, over the years, I've seen like all of them. I really, really love those. I think that they're just so cute and funny. And um, oh my gosh, I watched the best movie the other day. It was the movie with Cary Grant and um, about the Empire State Building. What is that called? An Affair to Remember? Oh my gosh, I had never seen that. And then I get toward the middle of it and I'm like, wait a minute, this is familiar. Where have I heard this before? And I remember it's the movie they're talking about in Sleepless in Seattle, which I like that too. I don't know, I just like so many. And if I think of any more throughout this, I will tell you. See, this is the problem here. I go way too long with my questions. If you had to give up shopping or fast food for a month, what would you do? You guys think I like really am obsessed with fast food. I really don't eat it that often. Um, I just like to show you guys because <laughs> it's really fun. No. Okay, I would give up shopping um, because I like food better than shopping. Do you drink alcohol slash wine or alcohol wine? I've noticed in your vlogs you have something in front of you. Just curious what you. I don't. I don't drink on. I never drink like what I'm doing this. Um, but I'm not a big drinker. I really don't. Um, I just don't drink that often. If it's like, I don't know. I'm just not. In, I'm just not super in. I'm just not super into that. Uh, what is your overall number one organization tip? Don't be a hoarder. That's a good question. Don't be a hoarder. I've been there. Like, I remember in my last house, I mean, not that I was a hoarder, but I think it was like, I just didn't really know my style and I was saving everything. I had so much like freaking decor piled up in the attic and just crap. And it's like, you can see someone's house and it looks really nice, but then in every single drawer, it's just like, ugh. Um, but then, of course, like when we moved, it helped me a lot. Um, I've cleaned out so much here that, you know, the storage that we have is just actual stuff. It's like either furniture that's like not being used, that will be used, you know, later, or, um, what, what's happening? What's on me? Oh, it's like a big hair and I can't see it. Um, there it is. Or, you know, holiday stuff, which I don't even have that much anymore. I got rid of so much holiday crap. I just kept like good stuff, you know, just, just really be real. Okay. Be realistic. Don't hang on to things. Don't be a hoarder and put things back, like put things back when you use them, you know, like have a place for everything. And then as you use it, put it back. Uh, if you could only keep one eyeshadow palette out of your entire collection, which would it be? Um, Oh my gosh, well I like the ones that I worked on like with Sigma and stuff. Those are like the ones that they don't sell anymore. Those were fun. But let me just, but okay, not sentimental purposes. Let's just say like ones that are available that I, is this hard to do? This is kind of hard to do. I'm not gonna count my Little Bear Minerals ones because I like those. See, now I'm getting like kind of, gosh, there's so many. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. This is good. I mean, it's expensive, but it is so good. The Vizar, this is the one, the number one, it's literally called basic. Okay. It's 
literally called basic. <laughs> this is what you want, it's so good. And then, okay, I hope that they still sell this. It's the Stardust Vegas Nay Palette. I'm not kidding you, this thing is so good. This is my favorite, like if I knew I was gonna go like um, some, maybe maybe to Vegas and like wanted some pretty eye looks or something different, this is the color, I would, these are the colors that I like. I like pretty kind of glowy purples, like this dark like purpley cranberry, I, I love it. Everything is perfect about this. And um, I still reach for this all the time. If you had to choose only one purse to use for the rest of your life, which would you choose? Headlighted asks. Um, I don't know, probably, uh, I don't wanna think about function. I wanna think about which one do I really, I do need to think about function, I don't know. Probably, uh, I'd have to say like my Neverfull, like my big Neverfull GM, because if I'm gonna be using it for the rest of my life, I couldn't take a small one, because then I'd need a big one, so I do need to think about function. So the Neverfull, that would be it. And that one I feel the I feel like the most warm and fuzzies with. Do I get laser treatments such as BBL or IPL? Do you have any tattoos? Do you get Botox or any other injectables? Did I already answer this? This was the Botox question, or was this the Botox question? No, because I didn't answer the ones before that. Okay, I do not get any laser treatments. I need to. Because I've had like breakouts and even when my skin looks really good in the sunlight or whatever, if you're looking in different it looks like you know, so I need to take care of that. Do I have any tattoos? No, I almost did. I went to, when I was 18, I went to a tattoo parlor and I knew exactly what I wanted. I wanted a butterfly that was like sideways. Was I 18 or was it after that? I was 18, I think that's why I went. I wanted it to be like a sideways butterfly that looked like it was sitting on my rear. Um, and the guy was like, um, the guy that does like bigger tattoo or smaller tattoos isn't here today. I think he was just telling me like, you're an idiot and you don't want that and you need to go away. Not that if you have that, that's bad. I still think that would've looked kinda cute, but I am really glad that I do not have a, a tattoo of a butterfly on my ass. I'm really, really, really happy about that. And then I answered the Botox and injectables thing, which no, in the other video. Any advice for home buyers looking? Okay, y'all, this is so funny. Maybe it's because I've mentioned it in the past. Maybe not a lot of people don't talk about that. Um, I'm not an expert. I don't know, I just share exactly what I've done, okay? I'm not an expert. I'm not trying to say, this is what you should do, and I'm an expert, and all this. No, I, I literally am just sharing. Um, but it's funny that you guys have a lot of questions about that, and you have, maybe you don't hear a lot of people talking about it, so I get it. Um, Mel Kircher, she says, any advice for home buyers looking to purchase their first home with plans to make it into a rental? Do you Brad have plans to purchase any more investment properties and do Brad seem to have a wonderful marriage? Any relationship advice? I feel like I kind of covered a lot of this last time, but um, so yeah, I'm sure you probably saw that, but I would, I would say for sure, um, start very small if you're planning on making your first house like a rental, which I would always plan on doing that anyways, um, unless you're just like a millionaire and you're going to just like go big right out the gate. Uh, don't, don't, don't think it's gonna be like your forever home. Start very small, get a house that you know is gonna have like minimal upkeep that's in fairly good shape. Um, take really good care of it, make little improvements if you want, live there for three, four, five, however long you wanna live there. But yeah, start very small and that will leave you room too to save money while you're living there towards something else and then you can move into something else and you'll have you a good little rental. And yeah, we're, we're getting more, I mentioned that last time. What um, teeth whitening products do you use to keep your smile bright? Chelsea B7 asks. Um, I can't do a lot of that because I have very, very sensitive teeth. I've always had very sensitive teeth. I have to really be careful with my teeth and like take care of them. I don't have like the strongest, best teeth. Um, but I am a like, I'm a diehard about like taking care of my teeth because it really sucks to have to get like fillings and things like done. So um, yeah, I just, I floss every single day, twice a day, cause my teeth are really weird. They're like really close to, I mean, I guess everybody's teeth are close together, but um, I like have to floss a lot. Um, and then I just use a teeth or a toothpaste that's the Pronamel, not even the one that says whitening. Um, I've, I have used the one that says gentle whitening before, but my, my teeth are so, so sensitive that I cannot do whitening treatments. Like even just talking, I would be in so much pain. I would have, like even just opening my mouth, I just can't. Teresa Marie W says, what is your favorite meal? I just spit, sorry. <laughs> What's your favorite meal and snack in Disney World? So easy off the top of my head, Dole Whip. Uh, they have it in the like Adventureland section of uh, Magic Kingdom. It's my favorite thing on earth. And uh, what's my favorite meal? Um, we've ate some really good places in Disney World for like the ambiance factor, like the whole like 
nice but the top of the contemporary hotel has a California grill and you can you have to make reservations pretty much ahead of time anyways to eat there and when you do ask them for a window seat looking at the Magic Kingdom so and also plan it kind of close to when you know the fireworks will be and then you can go out on the roof and watch the fireworks and they have like the music coming in it's so nice um, we did that on Valentine's Day on our honeymoon and we did that the last time time before last we went to Disney too although the food was not as good that time as I remember it being before but it's you know maybe it's hit or miss but that's a really good place and I like it um, but the food one of the really best food places and there's a lot of good eating at Disney World like if you're going this last trip with Olivia was very different um, we didn't like get the big meal plan thing we got like just the smaller meal plan but if you're going as an adult even if you have like kids that are a little older I think this next time we're, we're going to get like the big meal plan and just go to the expensive restaurants like go to the nice places with Olivia anyways because she'll love it I would recommend looking at Disney World like from a like restaurant point of view and like that that's Brad and I's favorite thing to do going to all the good restaurants at the hotels at the parks there's so many good places and it's not like it's not like park food you know what I mean um which they have good places for that too but man there are some really really good restaurants in Disney World but my very favorite I would say two other than the the Dole Whip um go to the is it called Monsieur Paul's in Paris, so, so good the, in, in Epcot, a little Paris section. That was one of the best meals. Um, the California Grill, like I said, and then at the Wilderness Lodge, they have a place called Artist Point that Brad always remembers. He got like this big, like it was called like the wild game, like meat platter. And it was all these like weird meats and like all this stuff. And I got really sick that night, I remember. I think it was because we had just been eating, eating, eating like all day, it was crazy. How do you keep your daughter entertained while you do your house chores? How much time do you spend cleaning and organizing and stuff like that? Um, I've really tried, before Olivia was born, I like went into like hardcore nesting mode. And then, you know, of course, like when she naps and when she does stuff, you, you have time to do that. But I really got the house organized. I cleaned out so much stuff. Um, I'm like a, a, is it a tinkerer? I want to say a piddler, but that sounds weird. I like to piddle around. Um, that word sounds like it might mean something else. But um, I like to kind of just be by myself and organize things and look through things maybe watch something on TV I'm very kind of like that I like to be by myself and I used to do that a lot like at night like Brad would be doing something I would be kind of like doing something like creepy on my own it sounds really creepy but um but you can't do that a whole lot when you've got a child but you do learn when you can um you know after they go to bed you can organize stuff if you if you know you want to do that or clean um but in, no during the day I clean and, and Waylon's very Wayland Sheds, we have a big golden retriever, so we vacuum every day, um, maybe every other day, but but if I vacuum every other day, we have dust, like, not dust bunnies, um, hairballs all over the house. You know, he gets shedding treatments. I mean, it's 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 intense. And we're, lo we're used to, like, looking at just a little bit of hair here and there, but um, Olivia got really used to the vacuum cleaner, so she, it doesn't even phase her. She, like, chases it around when I vacuum. But now that she's kind of all over and the house is pretty much, well, it is, it's baby-proofed, um, we know we have gates where she can go, but she pretty much, you know, when we're downstairs, she's got the whole rain, except for, I don't like her to go into the living room or the dining room because if she gets around there, I can't see her. So we keep that blocked off, but she's pretty much everywhere. Um, you can get stuff done. It's, it's, it, if you're in the phase where your baby is very small and you think, they're right in between, like, so Olivia really slept a lot, and she still does, she, like, she still has her good naps, but... When you're out of that first like baby phase where they're just like sleeping all the time and then you're just having to carry them all, you know, and then that's a very stressful phase because you think, oh my gosh, am I ever going to be able to do anything? And yeah, just, it, you will, you know, just, just trust me. Um, everything will, everything kind of works out. Um, but, you know, I do take advantage of her naps a lot and when she goes to bed, I started her on a really, to me it's really early. She goes to bed very early. So that's kind of, I think that's, um, you know, um, what is your favorite way to spend? Oh, what is your favorite way to spend a night at home after bedtime for Olivia? And what's your favorite candy? Ugh. And then the question after this, I can't even take you seriously. Um, <laughs> we'll get there. Okay, my favorite way to spend a night at home after bedtime. I think I kind of, I live for my DVR. I watch Housewives. I watch The Shaws of Sunset. I watch Southern Charm. I watch every franchise of the Housewives. I watch Watch What Happens Live. I watch all of these wonderful shows. Um, what's the other one that I like? There's a lot more. Is there another one? There's another one. What is it? Oh, I can't think of it. Um, 
Okay, anyways, I love all of these shows, and I, I get really excited about them. I get really excited when I have like a full DVR and I can be like, yes, three hours of like, you know. Um, but anyways, I, I love watching all that. A lot of nights though, I will edit, and that's really good. I'll get a lot of editing done. Yeah, I don't do a lot of noisy things around the house, obviously, so I'm not like cleaning or anything. We'll watch like a movie or, uh, you know, if, if it's a night where I have to edit. I even enjoy that because it makes me feel really like accomplished for the next day, and then I know that I'm good to go for the next day. And I try to myself not stay up super late. Sometimes when I when I tell my friends, I'm like, I'm already in bed. It's not that I'm like in bed, like trying to go to sleep at like eight o'clock. It's just that I'm like, I'm wound down. I'm like, you know what I mean? It's just like my time. People are so sweet. I just, I just can't even all. Okay, the girl that I cannot take seriously, Britt Rossi, she asks, would you get a cat? And I'm wondering, does she know that I don't like cats? Is she being funny? Um, or does she just not know? I'm kidding, Brittany. I'm, I'm joking. No, I really, I really do. I have a cat phobia, and it's, um, I want to say it's unwarranted. What's the word? It's, it doesn't make any sense, but it kind of does, because I remember I had a friend when I was younger. She was on my little softball team when I was younger, and I remember I went to her house, and she had this cat, and I was used to dogs, and just picking them up and being like, hey, and this cat, I picked him up, and he just felt like nothing, and he was like, ugh, and when I picked him up, he because I wanted to cuddle him, right? So I pick him up and he went like this. I just remember seeing this, like he flips over and it was like, and he like scratched the sh out of me and th this freaking cat. And oh, I just remember ever since then, I, I'm just very weird about cats. And I just, I feel like they smell, um, maybe it's just, I don't know. I'm not saying anybody that loves cats, they're adorable, you know? They're kind of scary though. They kind of look at you like, cats are a little intense for me. Uh, what's your favorite summer dessert? Uh, the, the Thea 925. I gotta say, I really like the, um, from Cheesecake Factory, the lemon meringue cheesecake. I don't know if it's something new, which I don't think, it doesn't seem like it is, but I had never seen that before, and it is so good. If it's, it's, it's just like one of the best cheesecakes I've ever had. What qualities do you hope Olivia inherits from you and from Brad, and what is one thing you hope she won't get? I'll start with the last one. I really hope that she will be more patient than I am. I'm very impatient, and I feel like it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing. It's good in business, and it's good like when you're getting stuff done, um, because I'm very like, you know, on top of things but I just don't have a lot of patience for other people. I have a lot of patience for like animals and for kids. I was a teacher, you know, when I taught and stuff. Patience, like patience all day long, probably more patience than a lot of teachers. Like I was, I feel like I was really, really good at that. And very, I feel like I'm very good with Olivia with that. Um, very good with Waylon. Patience all day long. But with like adults and with like business stuff, I have no patience. And it like, it's very strange. Um, I don't know what it is. I feel like I've, I'm very, there's like very just two different, I don't know what it is. So maybe it's not patience. Maybe it's just tolerance. Um, is that, maybe, no, it's patience for sure. I'm a very impatient person. Like when I'm waiting on someone else to do something that I know they should be doing or if something's wrong and it's out of my control, not like things that kids do, because kids, you are totally not, like, a lot of times, like, babies and small kids, like, um, a lot of things are out of your control. I'm not talking about, like, discipline stuff. I'm not talking about, like, that. I'm talking about, like, um, yeah, you don't, yeah, a lot of things are out of your control, but that's fine. It's it's just adults. I have no, I, that's it. I have no patience for adults. I don't know. Is that bad? I hope that she's more patient from mm, a good quality for me. I hope that she's confident. I hope that she, and I'm gonna, you know, I think that comes with a lot of like how you're raised and um, I think too, this is awesome. All of this experience online, people may look at it differently. I look at it like how wonderful is it that she has parents that have actually, and me firsthand, that I've actually experienced like how to be on social media. Like I think that's why a lot of kids not kids, but people in this last like, generation have gotten in trouble and social media has been such, honestly, a bad place because parents don't, their parents don't have the experience with social media. So how can you even teach them? I remember when I was in college, coming out of college in like 2007, 2006, yeah, around 2006, we would have these like professionalism meetings and they would say, do not ever have a Facebook account. Close your Facebook account. This was when MySpace was big too, which I mean, 
everyone ended up closing their MySpace account anyways, but they would say, close your MySpace. Facebook is just as bad, close your Facebook. Do not ever get online. Now teachers have blogs, um, schools have Facebook pages. I mean, it's just really funny how that has changed. So I think that a lot of people just don't understand it and they don't really know how to protect their kids. Um, but I feel like going forward, our gener like people that are kind of like, around my age, like adults now that have had Facebook, that have had social media accounts, that have been online, that, that are now raising children, I think it's going to be a lot different. I really do. Um, I really hope so. But, um, but I feel like I can teach her that, you know, look at all this. Look at everything that, you know, people may have said things about mommy or people, you know, does it matter? No, like it's, it's just, you have to be confident. Um, and you know, with what you put on and stuff too, what, what you put out there. So I think that's gonna be a good lesson that I can teach her. And of course, like I said, like confidence and things like that, um, building her up, I think that's really important for girls. Um, and then with Brad, Brad is such, Brad is the type of person that can really like do anything. Um, <laughs> he's like, you don't know that he can do something and then he's like, he's like fixing something or he's building something or he's like done something that you're like, what, where did that come from? Um, but so, so I feel like he can, like, if he wants to do something, he'll do it, but his best personality, he's really funny and he's just heart of gold. And I know people say that about people all the time. Uh, not that I don't believe you, but Brad is just like such, such a good person. Like he's the type of person that like, if you're in a parking lot, um, He'll like clean up the park, you know, like he'll say, oh, someone littered, like, and he'll be like cleaning it up. I'm like, Brad, come on, let's go. You know, it's like, don't touch the trash. Um, yeah, you know, I know it's funny, just, but then he'll be like holding doors for people and helping people, which I think everyone should do that. And I do that too, but he's just very overly like aware of other people and helping. I just, I hope that she gets that very kind heart, helpful, just good, Okay, I'm gonna cry, what is wrong with me? Again, p important lessons you wanna teach your daughter, I think that's that's good, and treating people nicely. And I've, I've mentioned that before, like, you know, I think that's part of the problem nowadays. People, like, have no compassion towards other people, and, um, you know, you just have to teach them. You never know what people are going through at home, and, you know, don't judge other kids, and it's just a lot. Um, what is your top favorite things Olivia has done or is doing? I think I would say, with, with her, she, um, she is learning right now it's every single day new words it's just funny because like every day she says something different like she had she wasn't saying daisy and we were reading a book she points out all the characters in the mickey mouse book and that's kind of how she's learned all the names of things shoes if she ever sees a picture of shoes it's shoes shoes that was one of her first words was shoes um ball it's like all these things she's saying and it's, a, it's freaking adorable and every day it's something different. She said Daisy yesterday. She was like, Daisy. And I was like, oh my God, like, I looked at Brow, like, did that just happen? You know? And then Donald, oh, like, oh, it's really funny. But yeah, there's just a lot. It's just funny to see her talking, and um, she's really, really funny. If you could go back and tell your younger self, what advice would you give? Lindsay Burke says. Um, and I think this is really important too for, for girls and like women and everything. Don't give a flip about what other people think. Don't let that like bother you. Do what you want to do. And I think some people try to be different, like just for the sake of being different. Like I'm not saying I'd be like, okay, well I'm gonna wear this like thing on my head, and not care, and just, um, just do what you want to do. I think you know, just just do what you want to do. Do what makes you happy, and don't worry about other people. Don't let other people's opinions affect you. Allison, it's Allison T. I love you. You comment then all, not just because you're nice. I'm not saying I love you because you're nice. Um. But you really do. Like I can tell like you, you've always been so sweet and you know, you do comment a lot, but it's like, I can, it's not because you're, you're just being so sweet and I'm like, oh, I like you because you're, you're being nice to me. I mean that too, but I can really tell like you do take time, you know, you watch my videos and it, that means a lot to me, you know, and you're following what I do and I just, that's really sweet and I really appreciate that. Um, she says, where do you get your style inspiration from? Magazines, books, and Pinterest. I have always been a big magazine, like book person when it comes to home stuff. I don't like to read fashion magazines or beauty stuff. Um, I feel like I'm just inundated with that doing what I do here. And I don't want to be like biased about things. I don't even watch a ton of YouTube, I'm going to be totally honest with you. Um, I just like keeping it, and I think maybe that's why it translates different here because I'm just talking about things. And a lot of people say, wow, you're really late to the party on that. I'm like, what party? Like, <laughs> this is my party. Like, I'm just talking about stuff that I like. Um, but, uh, but no, I, I, 
I love home magazines. And I'm looking at my bulletin board right here. I have this like board behind me. Um, I have tons of magazine, or that makes, um, and I have like little, and I have like pictures that I've cut out of things, like pretty rooms and things like that. I used to keep, before Pinterest, I had a folder where I would tear out like room inspiration photos. And you know, I may not even go back and look at them a lot, but when I look at that photo, there's a room picture that I really like that I've always loved, and that's probably like four years old. When I look at things like, I went back and found that little folder, and it was over there, and I think I threw it away. I did, I got rid of it. I was looking through the pictures, and I was not ever looking at them, but in my mind, it was like I made those things happen. Like, I got things that looked kind of similar, or how I'm thinking, wow, that looks, what I like the most about this photo, I actually did in my house. Like, how cool is that? So I think that's really neat. Um, I really do like Pinterest, but what I love about Pinterest is that if you have an item of clothing that you cannot figure out how to freaking make it work, like if you have a weird, um, say you have like a fur vest, I don't know, I mean, which those aren't that, say you have a fur vest and you're like, what do I do with this? If you look up like fur vest outfits, all this stuff comes up and you're like, wow, you know, or like if I'm thinking about doing something to the house and I'm like, you know, I want to get this kind of a thing in the kitchen and then I search that on Pinterest. You get all these, that is what I love to do with Pinterest. I don't really browse Pinterest and just look for things I like. I usually have an idea in my head and then I look for Pinterest and then that kind of helps me visualize things. So um, I'm very visual. I guess there's a lot of like Hillary and Trump questions and I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. I will never talk about politics on, there are some things you just don't, I'm not even touching that. Totally respect those people that do, but like I said, I am not about to start anything with, no, I think that that's just totally, I, to, I, I have very strong opinions, but I respect everyone else's opinion. I'm not even going to say anything else. If you had to eat out for all meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, what restaurant would you choose? That is so, so easy. Cheesecake Factory, because they have everything. Any tips for getting Olivia to wear her baby aiders, Danish Beauty asks. Yes. Uh, well, I don't know tips. Well, yes, actually, I do have a tip. Don't ever put them on your kid unless if they're in the very bright sunlight. Um, if we're ever walking, like, I don't put them on her, like, just for fun. I put them on her, like, when we're out and it's really bright. That way when I put them on her, she'll see, like, whoa, I actually need this. Is my eyelash coming off? <gasps> no, it's just my eyeliner. Or is it? Yeah, it's just my eyeliner. Um, then she'll see, like, I need this and she'll leave them on. If you could give one piece of marriage advice, what would it be? I think, you know, you just, like, get so wrapped up with life and just... You just you just have to not lose focus on each other, why you married each other, just love each other, you know, make the other person happy. And this is the thing, I think that so many women and men, they get on the whole like kick of what can they do for me? They're not giving this to me. And then you think, well, what are you giving to them? You have to think, well, if that person isn't being there for me, you know, usually like that's the end of the world, but you have to think, what are you doing for them? Because if someone's not giving you something, they're not going to give it to you if you're not giving them the same. So don't ever lose sight of that. Um, you know, people have so many issues nowadays. I mean, there are so many like distractions with social media. Don't let it get personal on social media. Like, I mean, obviously this is my job, but Brad and I don't really use Facebook that much. We don't, you know, just, I don't know, just spend as much time as you can with each other. Make each other feel special. If you want someone to do something for you, do that for them. Like, that's my biggest advice. Do that for them. I think people expect so much from someone, and then you talk to them, and you're like, well, what are you doing for them? And they're like, well, you know, I'm pissed because, you know, I'm upset because they're not doing this or that. Well, you're never going to get what you want, you know? Would you, okay, well, okay, let me just read. Would you ever allow Olivia to start doing YouTube when she was a teen? Um, no, I don't think so. I don't think, I, ugh, I just, I don't know. And I guess I, you know, that, that goes into me saying like, I'll prepare her for like things that people say and she'll see that it doesn't, you know, but, um, I just don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't, I think that she'll see it's like, it's what mom does and like, it's what we've done here. Maybe she won't be interested in it cause it won't be cool to her cause that's what mom does. Um, what can you say about people saying that vlogging isn't healthy for relationships? Okay, maybe this will be the last question. Oh my gosh, there's still so many good ones. Um, but no, uh, maybe, let's answer a few more. This will be like another 40 minute or I can feel it. So uh, about relationships, I think what it is is, Brad is Brad's on there when he wants to be. Um, I'm on there when I wanna be. 
if someone was telling me that I had to film something or that I knew, okay, frick, every time I go out with this person, I'm gonna be filmed, like, no. I, I don't film every time I'm with friends unless if I know that it's cool and it makes sense. I'm not gonna do anything that feels like forced. Um, with Brad, we're so comfortable, like we get this as, you know, something that we do. And if it makes sense to film, it's at a time when he wants to or that it's funny. If I can tell that he feels uncomfortable, why would I turn the camera on? Same with me. I would never turn the camera on if I felt uncomfortable about something or if I didn't want to talk. Um, even if you're the most like into it vlogger on the planet, like you really want to do it, you're, you're going to have days when you don't want to do it. So um, I think that a lot of times where it's hard on relationships, maybe one person's more into it than the other person and the other person feels like, well, shit, this just, this just comes along to, with it and I just have to be along for this ride and they don't want to be. Um, or when people are inauthentic. When you're doing things and you're different on camera and the person that you're with is like, what are we doing? And like you see people that have had a hard time. It's the same with like reality shows and things because people, I think, that don't know how to be authentic on camera are one way on camera and they may portray things, they may do different things, and then off camera, it's different. And then it causes stress. Um, I think that's it right there. But Brad and I are not daily vloggers. Uh, we don't, the, we turn the camera, and that's not even, we don't have the camera all the time with us, like set up. Like, I vlog from my phone. So if something's going on funny or we wanna talk about something, or if he says let's vlog, then we'll turn it on or whatever. If, oh, if you were one of the housewives of Atlanta, what would your tagline be? Oh my gosh, there are some really obnoxious ones. Oh, and I watch every single one. I don't watch Potomac, which I don't know if that's even gonna be back, and I didn't watch Dallas, which I don't know if that one's gonna be back either. The most obnoxious one, and I like Heather. I think she's, I like her, but again, I think that sometimes she's not very often, I think she's, she's trying to be something too that maybe she's. Not, not, like, I mean, I'm not saying she's trying to portray anything differently because obviously, like, they're doing it big. I think she has a little character that she's playing to, like, a thing. But her tagline is so obnoxious that I almost throw up in my mouth every time. And I'm a Heather fan. I'm not even gonna... But when she, her one was like, if you don't succeed, do it my way. Like, she always succeeds at everything. I'm like, ugh. What would mine be? Say what you want about me. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> no, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. Uh, I don't know. What would you... Something like that. I don't always eat fast food, but when I do, it's every day. No, I'm kidding. Okay, we're at the bottom. Oh my gosh, so funny. Thank you guys for watching yet another really long Q&A video, part two, which I did not expect to do, but I'm glad I did it because I think we honestly had even better questions that time than the first time. So thank you guys so much. I love you all so much. I really appreciate it. I am being so dead honest and, um, Seriously, I want the my eyelashes falling off. FYI, um, what is it about that? You know what I think it is? I think I've got like really curvy like eyeballs. All right, guys. So thank you so much. I'm gonna actually wear these out today, so I wanted to and get it good. Again, I just love you guys so much. Thank you so much for spending this time, for commenting, for just being good people. I mean, I just feel like they're, don't focus on bad stuff on YouTube. That's the first thing people say is, you know, criticism. And it is, because if you're like a normal human being and like, you see that, it does. It's like a thing, it's like a shot, you know, it does, it's kind of like, but please like focus on all this good. Like how, how wonderful is it that women are coming together and have been for so long, building each other up, positive comments, um, supporting one another. So 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 positive so just like good vibes so thank you guys so much love you all um like i said i'm not an expert but i do appreciate that you guys cared to ask me some questions so i really wanted to get through a lot of them if i didn't answer your question i love you i'm so sorry um but again thank you guys for watching i will talk to you all very soon have a wonderful wonderful week bye you guys